Hey guys, welcome to game four of the BSL Season 12 Chobo League Finals. Thus far, Exit has won all of his matches against Grasp. He's going to be starting the bottom left-hand corner as the Mustard Yellow Terran. Upper right-hand corner, we have Grasp starting as the Grey Protoss, although it looks blue, with the... Uh, with that beta art, I think it's when you when you did the when you pre-ordered, not beta, when you pre-ordered StarCraft Remastered, you got this neat Nexus, but it does kind of hide the color overall, and I'm wondering if they could have done that a different way. Anyway, the one problem I have with this gray is when this gray color overlaps with another color, it seems to on the minimap, it seems to make their units invisible overall. So maybe an advantage? I don't know. Maybe they can fix that. There's a bug for you. There's a bug for you, Blizzard. Fix that one. Although I don't Doing Blizzard's dedication to... Anyway, this is on Blue Storm. I'm a little bit concerned for Grast at this stage. Just because it seems like nothing has gone in his favor in this best of seven thus far. And Exit just seems to have his number. Has done a fantastic job scouting down everything he's doing. And really, again, playing rather than going for like any serious build order, but just really mirroring and having exactly what he needs to deal with his opponent. In the meantime, he's sealing his front door, going for a barracks supply depot on front. Arsene Gateway first. This is a rampless map if you are unfamiliar with Blue Storm because it is an old school map. I'll go ahead and do the map reveal. Now, standard natural expansion with a very wide ramp, but you have this is the interesting feature here. Is it's a I think zealots, zerglings, smaller units can slip through this. Dragoons cannot fit, tanks cannot fit. Phew, a sneeze call, uh, commentary for the finals. So it makes some interesting run-by opportunities. Because it is rampless, I think that makes Zelts a little bit stronger. Grass starting to make his way down. Exit repositioning that barracks a little bit and producing that initial marine. Probe doing a little bit of damage on that SCV as it's making its way across. And it looks like we are seeing a gateway cybernetic score. Interestingly enough, on the opposite side of the map, Grass is kind of doing his own one base front door seal. Comparatively. The Marine there, very quickly able to box out that probe scout. We do see a refinery behind this. And I'm wondering if this is indicative of Exit opting for a potential two factory play, something along those lines. It is a little bit harder to seal this front door because it is a very wide open natural expansion. Which I'm not sure if that's an artifact of 2008 or if it's just an artifact of just Blue Storm period. Range being upgraded before even the first Dragoon or Zealot. And I'm wondering if this is, once again, Grass trying to play mind games with Exit. Holding back an additional pylon once again. Probe making its way across. In the meantime, a bunker is up. And the barracks is placed a little bit further forward. It looks like that probe, I think it can sneak through and maybe get a scout by taking some damage going all the way across. One factory down, one SCV on gas this time to go ahead and potentially take an additional base. Now exit again with that lack of third pylon, trying to hunt down and find the proxy because keep in mind there was that proxy or that hidden tech in game one and game two. So once again, Grast trying to use the mind games of this series to his advantage, just going one Dragoon, one gate into expansion to follow it up. I think this is gonna pay off for him. Wants to hunt down this SCV with this Dragoon to go ahead and block any additional information. Exit. Finally something working out for Grast. Kind of a futile slap of the SCV on the Dragoon, taking out a little bit of shield. Grast trying to sneak back through that corner to get a good look, but three Marines going to maybe chase it down. So Exit wants to go ahead and grab his natural expansion as well. Has that machine shot building. A Dragoon is here, but again, I don't think the Dragoons can fit that gra Well, yeah, I don't think they can go through that gap. They can be annoying. Another SCV has managed to shimmy out to sneak up that le upper left-hand corner. I think he still, keep in mind, Exit still doesn't know what Grast is up to, and Grast has, in Game 1 and Game 2, done some proxy tech, so he's still trying to hunt information down there. Nexus is just about up. We see two Gate Robo to follow this. I don't know if that SCV was spotted or not. Exit might be able to shoot the gap and see the natural expansion. He wants, and here's the thing, this is kind of the disadvantage of playing this style where you're trying to play reactive against your opponent, is if you do not have scouting information, it becomes a little bit more difficult 
to know it, it leaves you a little bit more uncomfortable as far as what you're going to do as far as a follow-up scouting information is prime i want to see grass plug this gap unfortunately he's moving out to the right with that dragoon right as the SAV is able to slip through he's going to see that natural expansion he's going to be able to see the additional two gateways and he's going to be able to see that robotics facility and as we've seen in previous matches when you give is that a nope looks like that dragoon just backed off when that once that siege tank was out on the front I do like that he was kind of pushing that gap and doing a little bit of damage there kind of cheeky SV actually even getting all the way into the main and here's the thing from game one game two and game three when you give exit scouting information you can count on him to really adjust and adapt well shuttle being built so are we going to see I'm wondering if this is going to be a pseudo bulldog follow-up with just dragoons we'll see still two gate two gate robo it is possible there'll be an elevator of dragoons on the low ground here just relying on exit to have siege tanks out of position to engage this exit going ahead and grabbing an additional factory putting his armory and usually you see this with supply depots or something along those lines but he's going to go ahead and place that armory which again i'm not sure if that was uh i think that is in a good position to speed up the gas take looking at how they're uh, building right now so grabbing his army he's going to go for level one weapons upgrade i do like that he's putting this engineering bay to that corner to go ahead and have that scouting information just in case there were dt drops or something along those lines two additional gateways plopping down grass checking out his corner just in case the dragoon's setting up near that mineral only to potentially go ahead and grab a quick third and go for more of what finally a standard macro game between these two guys Double machine shop, which will allow either a lot of siege tanks or double vulture upgrades momentarily. It looks like we are seeing speed being upgraded on the opposite side. But here's the thing that this shuttle's been out forever. And I think this is, I'm not sure if I want to call this desperation for Grass. I feel like Grass isn't playing his comfortable game at this stage. He's looking for some way to slow his opponent's economy down. He's looking for some sort of chink in the armor of exit and so this shuttle's been sitting uh, silently for a long period of time he is going to have speed and at least a reaver out and i'm wondering if he's going to wait for the double reaver and go for drops dropping here in this back corner might be a death sentence because we already have several siege tanks to go ahead and engage that observer sees that but there is a wide open area to go ahead and drop at the main some additional turrets being planted to the north it looks like did he cover a turret underneath? There's just an SCV underneath there. Dragoon staging forward. With this significant investment, though, shuttle moving forward, it looks like it's going to be two Zealots and a Reaver. With this significant investment, though, that is slowing down Grass from taking that third base. And that's allowing Exit to keep that economy somewhat equalized. Although Grass in about the economic position he wants to be in, about 10 supply ahead. Reaver moving forward looking for a corner that's been spotted by the engineering bay does does exit see it though i'm not seeing any response from exit thus far he's dropping into the natural expansion rather than the main some zealots on the low ground there is a goliath there the reaver being dropped briefly there is a turret underneath it looks like so i didn't wasn't able to select it there was a turret underneath that engineering bay and so unfortunately for grass getting nothing out of that drop and so that was a delayed third base a lot of tech invested for very little as far as tangible outcomes unfortunate goliath range and mines being upgraded so exit anticipating a potential so kind of trying to play against grass's proclivities and unfortunately he's going for that charm booster upgrade he's really inside grass's head going for the charm booster upgrade while grass is actually already grabbing before even building the stargates here and this is going to be risky for grass because he's going for this off two base so it's going to be two base carrier to push into exit and i believe exit's already going to have he's already got five factories up he's going to have a pretty decent composition of goliaths to engage this he is grabbing that third base. These poor dragoons are 
They don't know what's going on. It looks like they're just patrolling. I think this might be for potential vulture drops. As Exit has shown himself capable of doing shenanigans as such. Speed finally being upgraded. Additional turret into that north. So you can just see Exit playing a little bit more passively because of the nature of this map. And macroing up a little bit harder. He has managed to sneak some vultures through. Checking that upper left-hand corner. Now here's the critical thing on Blue Storm. Oftentimes the player who can establish map control in the mid game and kind of cut the, divide the map in half and take one and deny an additional base to their opponent ends up winning. Three Stargate Fleet Beacon. Here's the thing. If Exit swaps into just pure macro, he might again have a timing where he can roll over Grast in the timing switch. Able to sneak back those probes and saturate that third base. He is getting that third base ahead of Exit. Single Dragoon here. Uh, not able to micro against those two additional mines, so that's going to be a dead Dragoon, I believe. Uh, nope, still survives. Able to get the second hit. The Vulture is able to sneak through and go ahead and deny that 12. And now Grass Dragoons starting to filter out towards the middle of the map. But the Vultures are also out in the field looking for what they can take. Grass also trying to grab kind of half here, half there. Trying to grab an additional base in that bottom right-hand corner. That is going to stop some additional carriers being built. I like the pylon blockade. Kind of classic. Four results in the shuttle to go ahead and deal with this. See if he's got enough to go ahead and deal with these vultures. If Exit doesn't start taking bases or getting, or if he doesn't get aggressive here momentarily, he might end up in trouble here in the late game. However, he's got level one weapons. He's plopping down two additional factories, so it looks like he does want to just go ahead and roll Grast over. Killing one of his own siege tanks for being... That's to uh, raise morale of the troops, Russian style. It's like, you coward, you're trying to hold back. I will take you out. March! I do not know that Grast has enough to fight this back. He's got a lot of his economy in these carriers. So Exit has a big window right here. To go ahead and either seize a insurmountable amount of map control or again to just kill everything grass has underneath and we might end up seeing a similar situation to the previous match where yeah their carriers up in the air but there just aren't enough troops underneath to support them which gives the goliaths free reign across the map vultures once again sneaking in that bottom right hand corner looks like they were able to kill three probes this is causing grass to shuffle a little bit towards that direction. I'm not sure if he wants to dedicate troops or not. I don't know if he... I don't think he's got positioning here on the map to realize what Exit's up to. Exit going to go ahead and use the map artifacts to siege. He does not have any overhead spotting. But you can actually get to a siege position here where you can attack that Nexus from the low ground. Grass not engaging just yet. The carriers are on the way. And this is not a lot of Goliaths to engage them. With those pylons getting killed, though, Grass lowering supply. Unfortunately for him, he wanted to drop on those juicy, juicy siege tanks with these shuttles. Now engaging the tanks unseaged. Great. I think that was a mind drag into those front siege tanks, wiping them out almost immediately. And Grass with a beautiful engage, completely smashing that army. So where I thought Exit was going to have the economy to just roll that over instead... With a beautiful mind drag, a beautiful drop, and a wonderful engagement from the high ground to the low ground. Exit getting obliterated and having to GG out of this. So Exit drops a match. Grass stays alive. We're going to move on to game five, I believe. Have I lost count? Three games in Exit's favor, one for Grass. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.